Now, beloved in the seven in this church, beloved in the seven in this church, this is a very urgent, urgent message, a very urgent, urgent message called is our obedience, our performance um, recognized by God? Is our obedience, our performance, does God value that? Well, I was at a local church this past Sabbath, my local church here, right across the street from where I live at. I'm not going to mention the names of the pastor or the name of the church. And they were stating to the fact that our performance is not required for salvation. They were stating that we can dress with jewelry and makeup and lipstick and earrings and we can, uh, he was even flirting with breaking the fourth command, breaking the Sabbath. He was stating to the fact that we can um, um, eat all kind of stuff and practice, downgrade the health message and still enter into the kingdom of God. That, that's, that's what he was stating in the long and short of it. And, and this guy, he has a doctorate. He has his doctorate, beloved, within the seven Evidence Church, and he um, just passed, he just came from a church up in Chicago, and he and uh, but that that's it. see he's not I don't fault this pastor because he's simply given the orthodox or the uh, the the mainstream teaching of the Seven Day Adventist Church at this day um, the, the conference teaching the conference teaching especially within the black work is that we can't overcome our sins obedience is not required for salvation. Sanctification, while being the work of a lifetime, does not have to be done at a certain time before looming sons of all crisis or the close of probation, the seven last plagues, however you want to call it, however you look at it. Um, I know in Moses Mason camp, they said sanctification has to happen before the sons of all crisis. And then in uh, other camps, they say, has to happen by the seven last plagues after the sons of all crisis. But this minister is saying it never can, never should worry about it because um, we'll be sinning until Christ comes back in the clouds. Just get your praise on and return your tithe and your offering. And this same minister was saying, you know, some of us want to fit in spaces that God has not designed for us. And I know this pastor was talking about me. I know this pastor was talking about me because I'm here at that church. That's my local church, and he is preaching all this new theology garbage, all this new theology, and that's the main reason why they won't hire me as a minister. They won't hire me as a minister because I don't support new theology. And I, I believe in victory over sin, and that we can resist temptation, and that we have to follow the health the form, and do the evangelism, publishing ministry, all work that they're not doing. They're not doing that work. They're, they're not doing publishing ministry, the, the leadership. They're not. They're not, they're not inspiring the laymen to do publishing ministry. They're not uh, inspiring them to follow the health message and do medical mission work and um, Bible work. And they're, te- they're, they're, they're going, just like, just like Jesus said of the, of the scribes and Pharisees of his, his day, they're traversing land and mile and making them two more child of, of the devil than themselves. That's just the long and short of it right then. It's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. But that's the attitude of these guys. And, um, we just need to pray for our leaders, beloved. Pray for them. Because like Sister White says, we're in the shaking time and the church may appear as about to fall, but it's not falling. Feeble and effective as the church may be, it is still the apple of God's eye. So that's long and short of it. That's why I'm not picked up in the system because I don't, I don't support the foolishness. I don't support new theology. And um, I'm not going to support new theology um, just to get picked up. I'm not going to support women's ordination. I'm not going to downgrade the Sabbath truth. I'm not going to support marijuana smoking and fornication, adultery, pimping and prostitution and gang banging and everything else just, just to get a job in the conference. No, in Sunday services, Sunday morning services. God is particular about what day we worship. The seven days of the week, of course you can worship God any day. I totally agree with that. But there's one specific day that is a sign between God and man. The Sabbath is a sign between God and man. And um, they just want to make the people feel good, tell them they can. He even said, God is not so concerned about the, the, the cut of your dress, of how you dress. Uh, that's what he said. That, that's what the saints want to hear. They, they, don't want to be, they don't want to be told that their lifestyle is wrong, that their dress is wrong, that they're 
they're dancing and the church is wrong. They wanted the same old okie doke. I mean, the same old foolishness. And it's so sad. And we're, li we're living in a time of the slaughter, beloved. The slaughter of Ezekiel 8 and 9. Y'all said it. I don't care who likes me on this page. Look, I don't care who wants to call me Davidian. So you lose your Davidian. You're a critic. You're, you're a critic. And don't call me, they say, for many days because you're, 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 you, you must think you're the slaughterer. No, I don't think I'm the slaughterer, but they're definitely going to be slaughtered for having the attitude. I'm telling you that right now. They're going to be slaughtered for having the attitude. Yeah, they're going to have, they're going to be slaughtered themselves. Let's go to it. Let, let's read the scriptures. Let's have the consolation of the scriptures, beloved. Ezekiel 9. Now, this is Ezekiel 9. Ezekiel, Ezekiel is in the Old Testament right after. It's right before Daniel. Right before Daniel, beloved, in the Adventist church. The Bible says, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make it flesh his arm, beloved. Cursed is that man. Cursed is that man. It says this, it states, You cried also in mine ear, in mine ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them to have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his strong weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a sword weapon in his hand. And one man among them was um, clothed with linen with the rider's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the church, cherub, whereupon he was to be the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the rider's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go to the midst of the city, to the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that signed their cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of. Verse 5. And to the others he said in mine ear, Go ye after them through the city, and... Um, smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Stay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom was the mark and begin in my sanctuary. And they began the ancient men which were before the house. Now, let me give you a spirit of prophecy quote about this slaughter. Now, it's not a, it's a literal slaughter, but literal men don't do this slaughter upon the SDA ministry. I don't support like the Gilead Shepherds teach that um, literal men kill um, literal uh, uh, pastors, seven day Adventist pastors. Now, I do believe that literal um, first day ministers will be killed by their, their saints under the sixth plague, Armageddon disaster days. But I do believe that the slaughter could be a natural disaster on the S day ministry disaster days or a heart attack stroke or COVID-19 crisis, all of that. Um, which just happens because they're eating um, either unclean meat or unkosher meat and they're teaching new theology. Um, but here, this is it. In the time of the end, the people of God will sigh and cry for all the abominations done in the land, which tears they will, will warn the wicked of their danger in trampling upon the divine law. The wicked will mock their sorrow and ridicule their psalm appeals. It is because they are um, drawing nearer to Christ because their eyes are fixed on his perfect purity that they discern so clearly the exceeding sinfulness of sin. And um, also, this is taken from Great Contrast 656, the mark of deliverance has been set upon those that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done, that be done. Ezekiel 9.4, the work of the destruct destruction begins among those who have professed to be the spiritual guardians of the people of the ancient men, the ordained ministry, the unpretentious Esau's, the false watchmen are the first to fall. There are none to pity or to spare. Men, women, maidens, and little children perish together. Great Conference 666. Also, Prophets and Kings, page 595-91. At times, the Lord may seem to have forgotten the perils of his church and the Injury done her by her enemies. But God is not forgotten. Nothing in this world 
is so dear to the heart of God as his church. It is not his will that worldly policy um, shall corrupt her record. He does not leave his people as to be overcome by Satan's temptations. He will punish those who, tra who misrepresent him, but he will uh, be gracious to all who sincerely repent. In the time of the end, people of God will sigh and cry for abominations done in the land. With tears, they warn the wicked of their danger of trampling upon the divine law. And with, un with, and with their sorrow um, and ridicule, their solemn pills. The wicked will mock their sorrow and ridicule their solemn pills. But the anguish humiliation of God's people is unmistakable evidence that they are regaining the strength and ability to carry the loss and consequence of sin. It is because they are drawing near to Christ, because they their eyes are fixed on His perfect purity, that they discern so clearly the, the exceeding sinfulness of sin. Meekness and lowliness are the conditions of success and victory. As the people of God afflict their souls before Him, pleading for purity of heart, the command is given, take away the filthy garments, and the encouraging words are spoken. Behold, I have called the, my iniquity to pass upon thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Zechariah 3, 4. The spotless robe of Christ's righteousness is placed upon the tried, tempted, faithful children of God. They have resisted the wiles of the deceiver. They have not been turned from their loyalty to dragon's war. Now they are eternally secure from the tempter's devices. Right, Prophets and Kings, page 590 and 591. So, beloved, within the seven Adventist church, God is going to mark his people with either the seal of God or the mark of the beast. And the seal of God comes with the latter ring. We're in that latter ring time right now. We're in the time in which God is sealing his people for setting them aside for holy use and purifying his ministers. Malachi 3.3 3 brings this point out because Malachi 3.3 3 brings out the same point of 1 Peter 4.17 and a beautiful per, uh, pericope on this subject. And um, let's turn with me there right quick because we're in that time period right now. We're in, we're in that time period right now, beloved, in the Southern Adventist Church. When, when those who are set apart for holy use within the, the work in the tabernacle will be set aside or slaughtered under the slaughter of Ezekiel 8, 16, 9, 1, and 6. All the Sunday surge are doing in celebration and new theology and jury and Woman's ordination stating that Sabbath keeping is not salvific and God's like a concern about the cut of the dress, all that stuff. Now, card 3 3 says, And he shall uh, sit as a fine and purify of silver, and they shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. That, that then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and in the former years. So, typically, the uh, Levi, the Levites were those who were, who were set aside, not priests like the sons of Aaron, to work in the sanctuary. And antitypically, those who are set aside are deacons and elders. They're like the Levites today. They're like what Uzzah was in the ancient sanctuary when he was, when he was slaughtered for carrying the ark in the wrong way. And because of an unfaithful leader of his day, David, who was a king of his day. So we have, we have Malachi 3.3. It talks about that, and then we also have, um, we also have um, another scripture that brings this point out. First Peter four seventeen. For the time has come when judgment will begin at the house of God, and when first begin us, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So these these, these elders, these pastors, these deacons, these these these, these self supporting workers, beloved, within the seven heaven is church that are supporting apostles such as women's ordination, celebration, new theology. Jury makeup and lipstick and all other kind of foolishness. They're going to be slaughtered in the slaughter of Ezekiel 9 and Sunday surge, while the faithful people are going to be set aside to give a loud cry. And they're going to be like the unpretentious Esau's in the church that are slaughtered. And uh, they're going to be just dropping dead of COVID and, and stroke and heart attack and all kind of stuff and natural disasters. And um, so I don't care if some fake Seventh day Adventist uh, 
a cop tells me, don't talk to me because um, you think you're the, I think you think you're the slaughterer and all this kind of stuff, and they're going to call you a Davidian. I'm not a Davidian, beloved. I don't believe there's going to be a secret coming over in Israel, a forthcoming over in Israel secretly. The Bible says Revelation 1, some behold it come with clouds, and every eye shall see him. I believe in Orthodox Adventism. But I also believe in test, like Testimonies of Church, Volume 5 clearly states, Testimony of Church, Volume 5 clearly states, um, the seal of God, Testimony of Church, Volume 5, the seal of God clearly states, um, mm -hmm. Testament of Church, Volume 5, the seal of God clearly states this about the, the ancient men or the men that were set apart to, um, to work in the sanctuary. She says, the ancient men took the position that we ought not look for miracles or the marked manifestation of God's people in former years. Times have changed, they say, and they are slaughtered. So um, the weapons that they were going to use to slaughter God's people are turned upon them. So beloved, stay faithful. Stay faithful in the truth. Do not uh, give in to temptation. Overcome sin. Follow the health of the form. Resist temptation. Follow the dress of form because the reform is the Elijah message of Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Behold, I will send you the Elijah message that will that will um, cause the shaking. And the, according to early rod and shaking time, they're going to rise up against it. That's the message that's coming right now through the last generation. People like Dr. O and Pastor Maurice Berry and these men, Jeremiah Davis. And, and you know what? These ministers in the regular line conferences that's in the black work that aren't giving these messages. The other ones are going to be slaughtered. Like Pastor Deborah Snell over there, Breath of Life. I'm not flattered by him in the least bit. And uh, my boy, Pastor Bird, who just left Oakwood Church bringing all the ecumenicalism. And what makes it so sad is now we have ecumenicalism through Breath of Life under Snell's leadership, and we have to have Sunday church again. So it's getting worse. We have this Easter sunrise services and Christmas trees, all kind of, all kind of Catholic traditions. Sunday... It's just as much a Catholic tradition as uh, as Easter and Halloween, which they call Fall Festival. Just as much a Catholic tradition as Easter, Halloween, and uh, and 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 and, uh, and, 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 and and Christmas trees and, and and Valentine's Day. They're all Sunday traditions. There's a wonderful book that talks about that. Um, that talks about these these Sunday these uh, Sunday Catholic traditions. It's called the truth about Halloween, Christmas, and Easter. All these things. All these things, beloved. And um, we need to pray that we can enter into God's kingdom in these last days and be sealed with the latter rain. We need to pray about those things. Most Congress and Father, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for our wonderful mercy and blessing. Please forgive uh, um, me of all my sins and transgressions. Let nothing that of my character come out to stop the... This message of reaching your people and saving them from the word you're giving me to give. I'm actually know that you forgive them of all their sins and their transgressions. Let them believe the receive the seal of God and get the latter rain and give the straight testimonies last day because none will be still unless they follow the health of form and address of form and get the latter rain. Jesus Christ, my prayer, amen. Mary Natha, God bless you. And one more thing, obedience is a car for salvation and God is concerned about your performance and if you have the wrong performance, you will be lost. God bless you. You have a happy Sabbath, bye.